Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kay Jones coming at you with another video. I am extremely nervous about making this video. You can probably hear it in my voice because <laughs> it's such a vulnerability to be on camera and talk about things that you are vulnerable to, I guess, like life experiences, why you chose certain things and your your anxiety about it your excitement all of that is like a there's something about like the human emotion or emotions that makes things quite vulnerable so but the goal of this video is to share my experiences from the past <clears throat> i'd say two or three years in a summed up way to explain how and why I decided to start my own business, uh, Jones Gold Luxury, and why I'm making that such a large career choice. Because uh, starting your own business and putting a lot of your own money into it, you know, we're talking about costs more than a car type of money. Um, it's quite a big investment. <laughs> You know, so whether you take out a loan or your own money, it's it's quite the jump. So, and I know that I will post this video on my personal channel, Kay Jones, but I'm not quite 100% certain I will post this on Jones Gold and Luxury, which is the business page. Nevertheless, the goal is to hopefully not just give myself some kind of clarity or peace speaking out loud about my journey but hopefully provide inspiration you know to to people out there who may be in kind of an odd position in their life or maybe you have goals or dreams and aspirations that you just are holding back on um so i'm hoping that this video perhaps pushes people to to be who they truly are or to to come out let's say and focus on what makes them happy right and uh be human and be your type of human if that makes sense because we're all so different uh so let's get into it uh obviously it's understood that i on my personal channel k jones i had been absent for years with a couple sporadic videos here and there and that is because, unfortunately, I got out of a very long-term relationship where I had left my job and, and just everything and moved in with somebody in the military um, that I was in a long-term relationship with. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. So I came back to my hometown kind of like twiddling my thumbs like, okay, I just put everything to the side to commit to this person. And now I have to start over again, not just emotionally uh, financially but just just there was a lot to come to terms with right uh i had gotten my undergraduate in finance and was working kind of in accounting and it was a really great place with my life and you know i really wanted to live with that person though and getting up and leaving everything was was a tough decision but i thought it was the right decision at the time uh, while I was in that relationship, though, I started my own business called K Jones Crafts because although there weren't really any good available jobs in the area at the time, I really just wanted to have some kind of hobby that brought in some passive income. I didn't really have any expectations. It was just that I was a collector of pins at the time and I wanted to make them myself. So I started work working with manufacturers in China and things like that. And Four years later, I'm still running that business and it's grown to the point where I just, I can't believe it, you know? I never thought it would get to that size, right? And I think it heavily inspired me and gave me the confidence to progress to opening up a new business. Um, but yeah, after I got out of that relationship at that time, I came back, I wasn't really ready to work. I was still running K Jones Crafts at the time, which brought in some income um a livable wage i would say and uh which was a blessing you know uh still quite a struggle though and i decided you know i don't think i'm ready to go back to work 
emotionally, I'm still in a rut. I'm going through a lot of things that I'm still processing and, you know, trying to find myself, all that good stuff. Um, was going through therapy at the time. It was, it was really good for me, you know, and you just, you're still in a healing phase, right? And you're very delicate. And when you go and you start a career or work, you, you want to be in a really good mindset and positive and, and refreshed, right? And I just wasn't there yet. So I decided to go back to school and get my degree in accounting, my master's degree. And I knew once I got started, I would finish it, you know. Um, I never thought I would go back to college for higher education beyond an undergrad, but I did, and I'm so proud of it. And what kind of made me go back to school versus going back to work was kind of a sign with my father. Um, we were at my university, and earlier that morning we were discussing how a cardinal reminds um, my father of his father, my granddad who um, unfortunately passed away when I was very young from suicide. And uh, he, a cardinal that day, came up to us and just started jibber jabbing and screaming and completely was making sure that its voice was heard when we were having the conversation of me going back to school. So, you know, that kind of just set, set me in stone to going back to school. I was like, all right, that's a sign, you know. Whether it truly is a sign or not, I will never know. But um, it took about a year and a half to get my master's in accounting. It was definitely very difficult. And I planned to go for the CPA examination. You know, in my eyes, it was plenty of time to recover from my kind of previous downfalls, I guess. Um, while also uh, doing something productive that will always be a part of me that can't be taken away from me, I guess, if that makes sense. So um, the program was hard. It was very good for me, though. Kept my mind busy, and um, I had to go back and take prerequisites since I was a finance major, and all of that was really great. I graduated of May 2023 this year, which was fantastic. Now, at the very beginning of this year, I actually had an internship with an accounting firm for tax returns. And boy, I was so excited to do this internship. It was, you know, the last semester and I was graduating and I was planning to become a CPA. My goal was to become a CPA and one day perhaps run my own business and doing tax returns and things like that. Because I've always had this dream and aspiration to run my own business which of course i was already doing but i wanted to see it on a greater scale right something that i saw had potential growth beyond of what i was limited to with k jones crafts right because during k jones crafts i was just learning everything learning about sales tax learning about taxes in general learning about how to ship things out all of the things that just take time, running a website, things like that. So when you already have those fundamentals, you don't have to learn it as you go. You already have that baseline, right? And so the potential to, to start a new business from fresh, to have longevity would be, to have long-term, I guess, growth and something throughout my whole life would be, would be more likely and probable, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Words are tough. but um. Yeah, so I, I went in with the attitude of, I want to be positive every day going to work. I want to treat everyone really kindly, and I want to work really hard, you know? Um, and I did get the hint that I was being hired on to work for just the tax season. But like I said, I just thought, you know, I, like I said, I just thought, you know, I'm going to woo them and get hired on full time because the full time payment was awesome. It was like a dream come true for me, right? With the benefits and the yearly salary. And you know, I I get to work and um unfortunately <laughs> there's very little training on the job because during tax season they're just so incredibly busy. So there's a very little training 
or most of the training is just as you go, right? But when everyone is so busy doing tax returns, um, there's not a lot of time to properly train interns. And so a lot of it was just figuring it out yourself on the job. And I started to learn very quickly that the turnover rate with that particular firm in that field was so high because it was like a sweatshop. Um, you know, you'd come into work and be filled with so many things that you need to do, um, ranging from partnerships to escorts to, excuse me, escorts to individual tax returns. And, you know, you're learning every industry is different, real estate to, to, uh, gosh, sports marketing to a dentist office, et cetera. I mean, the industries were just so broad and they each all had specific tax guidelines. Um, and so it was just very challenging. And, uh, you know, I think after the first month, I was really shocked at the challenge it, that it presented and kind of sweating, not literally, but like internally thinking, what have I done? Is this how sweaty being a CPA is? Like working minimum 60 hour weeks, you know? Um, at that time I was an intern, but I'm referring to full-time employees, you know? And that was the expectations, you know? If you were not working a minimum of 60 hours a week, you were useless to the firm because all of their income was made during that particular time of the year, if not the majority of it. So it was like, okay, we're really pumping out work here. And my assumption is that's why they hired interns was for help during tax season. It was very hinted at that they were understaffed in the previous seasons. And I had noticed that with clients that I was working on, the tax preparer that was there in previous years was no longer with the firm. And so that was kind of a red flag for me. It's like, okay, they obviously don't hold on to their employees or their employees don't stay. You know, and after like working in this sweatshop where people are not particularly in a good mood, they're very stressed, um, God knows what's happening in their personal life. And uh, not to mention that I was extremely young, you know, and I'm, I mean, I'm only, t I turned 27 this year. So, you, you know, when you're the youngest person there, you, you're often picked on and see, seen as, you know, just as less of a person, which doesn't make any sense because in the work industry, you're picked on if you're too old and you're, there is age discrimination, but if you're too young, you're seen as incompetent with lack of experience. So, but if you're too old, you don't, you're not seen as having the drive and you're seen as somebody who's going to retire or something like that. So there was always that challenge. And of course, the age gap is always a challenge um not particularly for me but i think for other people who work with me um they pref you prefer working with people within a certain age group you know you 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 have kids and you all have co more common interests more common generational you know your generation is the same you have you're in the stage of your life where you have kids or grandkids or whatever wherever you are particularly of your life um, so, you know, over time when you're stressed, learning really hard things and, uh, you're not getting the proper training and, you know, and you're near an environment that you're seeing people break down due to stress or people who just got hired, leave their job because they can't handle the stress, stuff like that. It really wears on you. And I'm just thinking, I'm not sure this is the type of culture I want to be a part of as a CPA. Do I really want to do this for a living? Or maybe it's just this particular firm that is, um, that is having this kind of culture and experience. I don't know. Uh, so, you know, I call my dad, think about leaving. And, you know, he's like, you really need to push through and learn to get thicker skin. You know, work, he gave me the advice to stay and finish out the tax season. 
uh, and which was good for me. You know, I learned a lot. I learned how to regulate my emotions better, um, how to deal with b uh, internal bullying. Uh, when you're being bullied by someone higher in the company than you, and it sucks to have to kind of shut your mouth and do the work. I kind of learned the, a little bit of the corporate world that I had not seen before. You know, my first job as an accountant, I had a phenomenal boss and I didn't have a bad experience at all. It was incredible. So that would, that was in industry accounting, right? So to be put into this situation was an eye opener and, and I learned a lot and it was an emotional struggle, right? Uh, and so, you know, when I let the firm know that I was unsure if they were keeping me on for tax season or wanting to keep, to keep me with the firm for the future. And I kind of wanted to know because I needed to know if I needed to apply for new jobs or if, if I was staying. Because when you have bills to pay, you know, if there's no kind of, I guess, um, communication that you are going to be staying or not, you know? So I kind of let them know that I, I wanted to get a feel for where they were at because, and I respected their decision no matter what. Um, because the communication was really strange. They were always talking about how it was such an asset and how they needed me. Where on the other side of things, it felt like I was being used for the tax season. So it was like this really odd parallel of emotional feelings, right? And I just kind of wanted them to be clear cut and dry with me with what they wanted. Um, and eventually it was very clear that they were only using me for the tax season. And all of the BS of how you're such an asset and how we need you and how you're great, yada, yada, is all a show to lead me on to work my butt off during tax season for the firm. It was all just business. And something really hit me with that is that, wow, I bet you the majority of jobs in America are like this. And I was just extremely lucky on my first job. And I'm sure people love going to work and they have a great company and a great culture. But I'm also sure there's a lot of people that are in terrible positions with their jobs and just miserable and mistreated and underpaid, etc. It astounds me that we in America, you can work a full time job and barely be able to afford food after rent. No matter what you do, whether you're a janitor or you work at McDonald's, you should be able to at least afford basic needs with basic living conditions, right? Um, at least that's what I would hope for working a 40 hour a week. Uh, but that's just simply not the case. And there's a lot of things that inspired me throughout this terrible situation. So, I mean, I would remember being told by the boss who said they didn't really need me anymore and I was just there for tax season, um, had the audacity to tell me that I should be rethinking my career and reconsidering becoming a CPA um, because I didn't want to work more than 50 hours a week. And uh, that really hit me because I do decide, did recognize that I don't want to live to work. I want to work to live, <laughs> but it, 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 I felt that that was so unprofessional telling someone who had worked their butt off in school to get a master's degree and was currently studying for the CPA exams to tell them that they should just rethink their life and rethink their career because I don't want to work more than 50 hours a week. That was just, even if you think something like that, it was so completely unprofessional to say. And I think it just hit me that like, wow, I want to run my own company and I don't want to be like that. And I don't want anyone that I hire to be treating people like that. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that big of a deal. 
and I'm sure that sure there was some truth behind her statement. Regardless, that's unprofessional when you had worked so hard for the firm and so hard for your education and were giving your 200%. It's just not a very becoming thing to hear. Uh, so I just, I just, uh, to be little, to be belittled by upper management, uh, is, is, is very unbecoming. Uh, so it inspired me. I knew I wanted to run my own business. I know that I have different passions and avenues. And during that time, you know, for these many years, I've always loved gold and jewelry and it's always been a big hobby of mine. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to run my own jewelry business involving gold, which I just absolutely love and adore, right? And uh, to really be a part of a business that I feel like when people are purchasing from me, they're purchasing something of value, something that they can wear and be proud of. And, you know, I had so many reasons behind it, but I kept thinking, no, you're crazy. Do you realize how much time and money that would have to go into that? for that to even work. And even then, how do you know you're going to sell anything, right? So <laughs> I kind of just set that to the side, right? And started applying for jobs and doing interviews. And I was becoming frustrated because the pay gap between these jobs were massive. I mean, we're talking 50 grand differences and for the same jobs, very fascinating. And the interviews, you know, you would get led on to be told that you're going to be hired and then you weren't hired or they would hire you, but you had other offers and they weren't patient enough to wait. Whatever the case, it was a mess and it was, it was quite fascinating. And I also got to learn kind of the culture of all these different companies. And once again, I found that there is no loyalty to your employees. Years ago, with my grandma's generation, you would work for one or three companies in your life and retire, and you would get a pension plan. And that was very normal. Nowadays, if you see somebody working there for two or three years, that's pretty average or normal, which is crazy to me. And I think that all boil, boils down to there's no company loyalty, loyalty. There's no retirement plans or pensions. There's 401ks, but Companies do not care about the people who work for them. They care about the money and the and the the stock. They care about, you know, just getting what needs to be done. There is nothing, it's all business. And it doesn't matter if you worked there for 20 years or one year. You're there to do the job and once you're done, you're done. Um which is fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's probably a smart business model. But then you see things in the news like blizzard and mistreating and sexual harassment, all this kind of stuff with company cultures. And I just am so inspired to, to perhaps build something that is a healthy business, a healthy business that is still derived from derived off of profit, but pays its employees enough to, to, to live that when that we sell a product to a customer, the customer satisfaction is the number one thing that's in our mind. It's not, can I make a quick buck? It's, I want this customer to be happy because I'm so honored. I earned their business. Uh, so, you know, a lot of that inspiration was from bad experiences. So after applying to a bunch of jobs, um, I had a week where I went on vacation with my dad and family. And I kind of just nonchalantly brought up with my father the idea of a jewelry business and working with manufacturers in Turkey and Italy and Thailand and like these dreams that I had. Because I'm, I'm a dreamer, 100%. Um, and to hear my father completely support me and get excited about these, these things that I kind of dreamed of made me realize you could make this a reality, you know, and for him being so supportive and excited 
and him being a very successful businessman himself who owns his own companies and does extremely well. And to hear him really be so supportive of me just hit something in my stomach. And I just, something flipped a switch there. And it was so funny because a couple of days later, I got a job with my city as an accountant. And it's a very large city, so it was quite an honor. And immediately I knew in my gut, I don't want to be an accountant. I love accounting. I love money. I love managing money. I love investing. I love finance. But I'm not sure I want to just drive to work, crunch numbers, and go home. Um, and I'm sure some people will just love their jobs in accounting. But I really feared to be stuck in a similar situation like I was before, which is probably not true. But regardless, to hear such massive support from my father, who was very successful, inspired me to just send it, just freaking send it. And I had saved a lot of money while going to school through my K, my business, K Jones Crafts. And, uh, you know, I worked very hard. I paid off my education in full. I think my, my master's degree was about $30,000. And, you know, that, that was all taken care of. And I, I just worked really hard. Um, and I just decided, you know, I'm going to invest in this. I'm not even going to take out a loan. I'm just going to start with what is doable, you know, within my means. Um, and so I started researching manufacturers. I started researching the jewelry industry and the Responsible Jewelry Council, uh, you know, where gold is ethically mined, all of these, these details, you know, starting a new website, how to become LL, an LLC in my state, um, how to be a licensed gold buyer and seller, and all of this just hard work. I just completely went for it. And my mother was supportive of it, supportive of the idea as well. She didn't, she didn't quite take me so seriously when I first brought it up. But now after my trip to the beach with my, my father, um, and this like enlightenment, and I told her I'm, I'm going to do it. I turned down the job with the city and she was flabbergasted. She's like, what? You turned down that job, that phenomenal job that had so much stability. And I said, yeah, like I just, I feel in my gut, like it was this weird sensation. I don't know, man. I don't know if it's like spiritual or what. I was like, I'm going to do it. And, you know, going into this, I've had no expectations. You know, I've just done tons of research and built everything up from the ground um, and invested a lot of money into it. You know, so after doing all the research and, you know, trying to figure out packaging and just everything that went along with it, um, the logo, just everything, um, I just, I, I just went for it all. And it took a couple months to get established, um, being a business and whatnot. And, uh, I just can't believe I'm here today. And during this time, I was so excited and also the most scared I've ever been in my life. I am no longer scared because I realize that there's nothing to be scared of. Um, you only live one life. You should live it as you please and that you should have no expectations and just be your genuine self and do you. As long as you're not hurting yourself or anyone else and you're genuine and, and you, you, you're honest, then everything will fall into place. And that to not have such high expectations on yourself, to just do your best. And if it doesn't work out the way you planned, great, I have a bunch of gold chains that are solid gold that I can sell off or whatever the case may be. You know, it, it was not the end of the world, right? And, you know, it is tough to hear from friends or maybe a few family members that are just like you what like you're doing this and this is how much it costs and whoa like what's going on here like i sound sound insane or crazy to 
be investing into something so big, you know, and to be to try something like this and to basically I shouldn't say risk it all, but kind of that mindset, right? And I think that entrepreneurs, that's a common thing that happens. You know, I know a lot of businesses don't make profit for a couple of years or whatever the case may be. You know, people have a dream and a vision and they go for it. And, you know, you just go with what's in your gut. And I hope that over time, taking it day by day, that I can absolutely bring a smile to customers' faces and have a piece of gold jewelry with them that they they truly love and wear every day or wear to special events. And that, you know, when they think of, oh, I had such a great experience with Jones Gold Luxury. I have a dream that one day I will be able to hire employees with a very comfortable living wage for what their expertise is and that they will enjoy working for me or, and enjoy the managers above them and just truly, truly love what they do or f- at least feel content enough when they, they go to work, they know that they're in a safe environment. And then I hope that trickles down to my customers as well. And uh, it is a big dream, but um, I definitely am taking it day by day slowly. And I think that this video and the honesty of it is good. And, you know, it is hard as a content creator to to do things like this because there are so many negative comments. It's very fascinating. (laughs) Any engagement is good engagement, bad or good. Even if you get bad comments, it's engagement on your video. Helps the algorithm. But when you see negative comments day after day, it truly can bring you down. Um, Obviously, I tend to just remove the comments or just, uh, what is it called? You can like blacklist the person where they're blocked, but they have no idea they're blocked. They see all your videos. When they comment, they can see their comment, but no one else can. It's the most satisfying thing ever. But like, even then, there comes a point where just like you don't care anymore. You do you and that's the most beautiful thing of it. And I learned that any negative comments that come around are a reflection of that person and them hurting and and themselves more than you. Um, So I hope that even if you're a content creator, you're streaming, whatever you do in life, that hopefully this video is inspiring and Bring some light in your day. And if anything is entertaining to listen to while at the gym or walking or whatever you may be doing. And I am so excited for the future. And I, I'm blessed right now to be doing K Jones Crafts and Jones School Luxury full time. I don't expect to be doing that in the future. Uh, it is very likely I'll have to get a part time job or work full time. And that is completely okay. And just how the game goes. But I still have these dreams and aspirations that I I look forward to and plan. I have no expectation of them coming a reality, but I I look forward to working towards, towards those goals. And I hope that I can make a difference in the world by running my own business, by bringing a smile on people's faces, by treating people with respect, and just overall a positive outlook. Because after all, we have to work to live, all of us. What goes around comes around, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Um, this was definitely a very vulnerable one. But if, if you liked it or got something out of it, uh, please feel free to comment. It will uh, make me feel good. And uh, whatever you decide to do in life, think about it for a little bit. And then if you decide to move forward, just send it. And sometimes things that are scary or things that you know you're meant to do can be scary. And just as scary as they are exciting. So... 
cheers to entrepreneurs, cheers to hardworking people, and cheers to having a good life. Thanks for watching, guys.